were born in Portugal. Yes. All right. What is the music scene in Portugal? When you were born, what's the mainstream、oh. of music people like listening to, and in comparison with jazz, where does jazz play? Where what's the like, role of jazz? When I was born, jazz jazz was something really small、uh, that people, some people would play, but、uh, most most of the so-called jazz musicians they were they they were playing like in the、um, and the national、uh, orchestra of of how can I say this of modern music like in and TV shows、yeah. and so there was not a generation of musicians that really only play jazz and 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 work in jazz full、uh, as a full time job you know so so my generation maybe it's the first it's the first generation or, or that from around late nineties. That that really studied jazz、uh, in a formal in a, in a in a university, not in a formal way, because there were some schools,、uh, there were the hot club jazz school, but they were they didn't give any any how can I say this any degree. Degree.、Yeah. So my generation, people that went to the U.S. because we didn't have undergraduate uh, college uh, programs in Portugal.、Mm -hmm. So <laughs> when I studied. Uh, late '90s. I, I went to the U.S. in 2000, but I had some friends that went like in the late '90s, '98, '97,、hmm. and and they went to Berkeley to the new school. So we were the first generation that really、hmm. did a degree.、Um, so so so、uh, the musicians that came before us,、uh, most of them were working in TV shows, in 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 in,、um, in a lot of different different stuff.、Um, Yeah. So basically, this is the、uh, what, what, what happened. The, it is interesting because when we opened the undergrad program in Lisbon, then I had a lot of musicians. Some of them they were kind of they, they were professionals and they were mostly devoted to jazz. But it it is interesting because I, I the the program started in Lisbon in 2008,、mm. uh, where I teach now at Escola Superior de Música de Lisboa.、Mm -hmm. We had one that started in 2004 or three in Porto,、mm -hmm. but in Lisbon it, start, it started in 2008. And it was interesting because I had some of the old guys, the guys that some of them were teaching at the hot club when I was a student. Then I have them as students, which is, was really <laughs> interesting and was a challenge because, like, you know, this guy he's an expert in swing、mm -hmm. and he's conducting big bands. And stuff, and I, I'm I have to talk about swing to this guy, you know.、Mm -hmm. So, yeah, because I was teaching instrument and stuff, but I, I I'm also I'm always I'm also now, and I was back then teaching history of jazz.、Mm -hmm. So it was an interesting challenge in challenge to meet these uh, um, more um, how can I say this people that didn't have formal education.、Mm -hmm. They went to school and they were teachers when I start studying. So it was like a reverse kind of.、Mm -hmm. Thing which was interesting, very interesting. What was your formal education in terms of guitar playing, and then、okay. they let you? I I played heavy metal for. I started like with fourteen playing metal,、mm -hmm. listening to Metallica and all those、mm -hmm. kind of and, and Iron Maiden, Slayer, and and so I had a band and、mm -hmm. we recorded a CD and we, we did some concerts in in the UK.、It、was kind of serious, but then I, when I was I, I started to study jazz late,、mm -hmm. at eighteen. It was like around '97. I'm from '77, so、mm. it was like around '97, and I thought, man, I, I really need to study music、um, formally. I, I I need to know chords and and harmony and and stuff because everything I knew was was by ear.、Mm -hmm. I just listened to the records and copied, and I was playing metal. I was not playing like these. I was not playing Coltrane changes or anything.、Mm -hmm. So. But、um, I felt that need, so I went to the Hot Club School.、It、was the only school in Lisbon back then available, and had this. Maybe a first generation of musicians that are already mostly playing jazz, but they didn't have this this college education. Even though most of them also studied at the hot club, so they had some kind of formal education, but it was not a degree, you know.、Mm -hmm. So I, I I thought, man, I really need to to play music, and I thought I don't I, I don't want to be a classical musician,、mm -hmm. even though. Then I went to the conservatory and I did some years in the conservatory as well because then in, on the second phase I also felt the need to to also study classical music, but. The first need was just to、um, study formally、mm -hmm. music, you know? and and the only thing available was jazz in Lisbon, so I, I, that's why I, I joined the hot club jazz school.、Mm. Uh, then I was in the conservatory. Then it was a very hard period because I was studying. I was doing three things at the same time. I was studying. I was studying at the jazz school at the hot club jazz、mm. school. I was studying at the National Conservatory classical guitar.、Mm. And all the other subjects, you know,、uh, like uh, music, uh, 
uh, theory and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I was studying psychology at the same time. So mm -hmm. that was a very hard period for me from like 98 until 2000 mm -hmm. because I was three things at the same time. <laughs> But then, then I had the chance to go to the to the to the U.S. to Boston to to Berkeley. I applied for for a scholarship. I studied a lot in those two three in those three years. I studied a lot, and I really tried to develop and my jazz and improvisation skills mm. because I, I had the technical thing, you know. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have like the the language or or the harmony or or I didn't know the. What, what I was that was a big struggle to try to understand what I'm supposed to sound like. Yeah, stylistic features. Yeah. Yes, yes, and what kind of resources can I use, and why, hmm. and wh what is Wes Montgomery doing in that blues? It's supposed to be a blues. Like one of the first so so songs I studied was SKJ hmm. from a record Wes oh, with. Yeah, and you know it has a harmony. The solo's harmony is really weird because it goes to the flat <laughs> two major, right? Yeah. So I was like, like, this is a blues, but it's not a normal blues. It's really weird. So I was trying to figure out what was happening and why was he playing those notes that sounded very good, but I didn't know why was he playing them. So I, those three years I was trying to understand that. And then I, I got a scholarship to go to Boston and I, I just packed my case and, and landed in the U.S. for the first time. It was the first time I was there alone. Mm. I was like, what, 20 yeah, so I was, no, wait, I was like 22. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's that's what happened. And when you were in Boston, do you remember what you were auditioning with? I, I auditioned in France, actually. Okay, so you were auditioning uh, for a Berkeley yeah, Scouts, yeah. Yes, yes, I don't remember the, the, the names of the teachers. It was a guitar player, but um, it was not it was not uh, Rick Peckham. Larry Bayonne, in the, the head of the department, or Rick Peckham was none of those no. guys. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the name of, of, of yeah. Do you, I, I do you remember there. what you were asked? Do you remember what you were asked to do or demonstrate at the exam? In 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 the scholarship exam, yeah, audition, I, yeah. I had to play like um, tunes or something and maybe some scales. I think mm -hmm. they asked me as a little some sight reading, some first mm. first um, first sight uh, reading. Yeah. And uh, maybe one or two tunes, a little improvisation, and and and, and maybe some scales. Mm -hmm. Did you play with the band, or you played by yourself or re alongside the recording? Ooh, ooh, no, no, I played the alongside the recording. Yeah. yeah, I took a, like a cassette. <laughs> there was no three, so I took a cassette with some Arbasol play alongs yeah. or something. When we really listened to music carefully, because there was not a lot of music available, uh, so I, I recorded stuff in school in cassettes, and then I would listen them, listen to the cassettes over and over again. Mm. And today, I think it, it's a very big challenge that our students have is that they have too much information to choose from. So if you tell them, go listen to Coltrane, they, they go to Spotify and they have like hundreds or, or dozens of, of, of Coltrane records. So they don't know what to listen for. Mm -hmm. And I think they are tempted of listening, but in a very um, superficial way. Yeah, very quick. And, and I, yeah, man. And I think back then, not having everything uh, available was good because you really... Paid attention to what you were listening to, you what to what you had. Mm. So yeah, that, things change, and we have to adapt. I mean, jazz education has to adapt to all of these technological changes. Mm. What do you think was the most important moment, person, or an mm. event in your education? I think maybe going to the U.S., like finding yourself in the middle of Boston with no family, no parents, no grandparents, no uncles, nothing. And you're like, I'm on my own and I'm doing this because I really want to study this music further and I really want to be a, a good musician. So I think that maybe was the most academically was the most as a student, the most important moment, like just going out of my country to a different continent, mm -hmm. feel a little scared on the first hours and then feel alone, mm -hmm. but at the same time, feel that I was fighting for what I really loved and, and yeah, man, and, 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 man, it was a great experience because I, I, I met a lot of, of, of very inspiring people. We were talking about your important moment and going to the Berkeley, that, that was a life-changing moment for you because you were away from home, also that experience of realizing your priorities musically and artistically and academically. Uh, being somewhere where there's a lot of things going on, a lot of people playing, uh, teachers, students, all this environment, this 
vibrating environments that really inspired me a lot. Mm. And having colleagues like uh, Lionel Lewecki or yeah. Kendrick Scott or, I don't know, it's... It, um, and it's something that really you get, you, you go, you get to school and see these people playing and like, oh man, this is like the <laughs> top of the top. <laughs> I, I want to aspire to that, you know? Mm. So, so yeah, I, I met a lot of inspiring colleagues, also a lot of inspiring teachers, mm. some, some inspiring teachers. Mm. So it was, was great. Well, it is excellent that you experienced Berkeley and you also experienced your education here in Europe. Uh, what would you say are the standard textbooks for musicians in terms okay. of, let's say, guitar methods? That's a very good question. I, I, I saw your... I'm not, even though even though I, I, I've studied academically, mm -hmm. I, I, as you know, I, I did a PhD in musicology, and, and of course... Books, and you, and you wrote life. the two books, yeah? Yes, yes. But when teaching jazz, especially, especially if it's not a master's, if it's an undergraduate... I teach instruments, so I mm -hmm. teach guitar mm -hmm. and graduate. I teach. I, I'm, I'm not a big de defender. I'm not a big fan of 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 of, of methods, mm -hmm. because the problem I find with methods is that sometimes they don't. It's like a recipe that's supposed to, to, um, to be good for everyone, but it's not. It's because everyone have has different needs mm -hmm. has different things that he or she needs to practice on so i, I i'm not a very good um fan of, of 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 methods but being said that of course there are some books that i really think that can help you out like the jazz theory book mm -hmm. of mark levine yeah mark levine. Um, some chord some chord my teacher brad wilmot from berkeley has two books on, on, on chords and harmony, mm -hmm. uh, which are really good. Uh, Mick Goodrick's books, the, the, he has um, um, a triads and, and four-part chords book. Uh, mm -hmm. that, um, I don't know if you know this book. He, he voice leads every chord yep. uh, uh, from the major, harmonic uh, minor, melodic minor, harmonic major, mm -hmm. every other chord. Um, so it's it's a very interesting book. That's a lifetime book, of course, to mm. study. And uh, of course, there are some important books, but um, uh, it's hard for me to tell you this book is really fundamental. Okay. I think m more important is to develop a good relation, a close relationship to your students. Try to inspire them. Try to bring the, their their love and their passion for the music. I know this sounds a little romantic, but uh, try to. Uh, let me just shut the door. Yeah, sure. Try to develop, try to develop in them the, the, the really a, a very uh, big interest interest with this music, and and trying to guide them in their in their in their path in their process, which is really hard because every student is different. Everybody has different needs and has different struggles. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, it's, it's hard for me to name one or two or three books that I think they are really important. I think it's important to develop a good relationship with your teacher or with your students if you're mm -hmm. a teacher. And 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 listen. I know this is a common place, but listen to a lot, uh, listen to music and play, and and be inspired by other people. I think jazz is, is a, mu a music that uh, has this DNA of interaction, of listening. Of um, um, sharing, of communication, which uh, books books can can talk about some harmonic aspects or some technical aspects, but I think the really core of this music is about interaction, listening, and and getting inspired by by other people. Mm -hmm. And books, I think books can't do that for you, mm -hmm. uh, but of course it can be a good way of of, of making some detours, of course. Mm -hmm. Well, what would you say were the biggest artistic and academic challenges when you were a student, let's say at Berkeley? Playing with very good, very good colleagues. I think that's, that's a, was, I had a, a few challenges, interesting challenges, and, and playing with people that inspire me and then trying to uh, have a level to play with them and then trying to, I don't know, to... To be in the same kind of state of mind, mm -hmm. adapt and communicate uh, with them. I think that was that was that was a 
um, I had some interesting challenges playing in recitals, playing in concerts. And, mm. But there's no university, so what, what am I going to do besides playing? Mm. So I thought, okay, maybe I'll teach in the school where I was a student. That's what I did. Mm. And then I thought, man, there, there has to be something I can do to... To, to make this go further and to, to develop jazz jazz, jazz um, education here in Portugal. So I was involved in two new programs. So this program where I'm teaching now that started in 2008 mm -hmm. and another program that started in 2009, which was in the other school, the Universidad mm -hmm. of Lisbon, where I, uh, I teach until... To, so I was teaching in both schools, actually, mm -hmm. part-time and full-time, but mm -hmm. now I'm full-time in the in the state the school, in the yeah. public school, so I left the, the private school. Mm. But yeah, so I thought, man, and there's something, uh, I, I, I have to do something to try to develop jazz education. So in the university, I did by myself all the, the project of the, of the program mm. that the Ministry of, of, of Education. And did you follow any patterns? Did any schools inspire you to put such and such program together? Of course, of, co um, of course, Berkeley was important mm -hmm. because I, I came back in two thousand and two. Hmm. So this was I was taking care of the process like in two thousand and seven. So of course, I have a lot of ideas hmm. that now uh, changed, of course. But back then, I had some a lot of ideas that that were inspired, of course, by Berkeley because it was that the experience I had. Hmm. I think it's normal when when kids. To leave school, uh, they bring all these certainties about jazz education. They think that yeah. there's a way of doing things, and they have their uh, recipes for doing things. Mm -hmm. And it was part, of course, it was part of my growing process. Have these ideas, these very fixed ideas, these recipes. I think they were very, of course, uh, I, I, because I, I teach. Uh, I, I'm, I'm the head of the master's depart the, the department. But uh, classical and jazz and everything in my school. Mm -hmm. But I also teach, and I'm very I'm part of the scientific commission, and I teach. I'm very involved with the um, masters in music education. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of these discussions with with students, with jazz students. That every day that that passes by, I have less and less um, fixed ideas about about anything in jazz education because um, I have more doubts, more and more doubts, and less and less certainties. Mm -hmm. So what I say to them is that I can bring you questions and we can discuss mm -hmm. and we talk about uh, topics and problems and and but most likely I'm not going to give you any answers I'm going to give you any fixed answers you're going to have to try to find the answers for yourselves um I, I think students will understand this because we are if I put myself into the position of being a student, I'm looking for ultimate answers, yes or no, do this, Peter, you yeah. know, step number one, step number three. Yeah. But the moment you probably let everybody know, hey, listen, guys, you know, it's so individual that, you know, everything that I'm going to give you is a guide. Step number yeah. one, you listen. Step number two, you listen. Step number three, you listen. And step number four, you make your own decisions and you take your own responsibilities. <laughs> yes, of course. Right. Uh, so, and that leads me to that question about who do you think is a good student? What what characteristics should we have in good students? We decide to go to BA, you know, and some some people do it for the love of music. Some people don't have to choose, but I they end up there. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I know this is, maybe this is not the answer mm -hmm. you're looking for, but I don't know what what is a good student. Sometimes uh, you have the perception, the idea that you, when you're doing. Um, an entrance exam, and, and you think a student's going to be and has a lot of potential, and then maybe he or she doesn't develop that potential, and maybe there's somebody that comes in, or, or maybe it's not, it doesn't get admitted, but maybe uh, he shows or she shows less potential, but maybe there's more, they can, you see them after some years and they develop more than the other guy mm -hmm. or the other girl that you thought they had more. So it's, it's very hard for me to, to try to. To talk about what 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 we what what is the the ideal student, hmm. uh, one thing of course is important. And it is a this is a common place of course is that they they have to be really really committed to this music and committed to sharing and and learning uh, processes. Um, um, and they also teach us a lot as as as, as students. The, the, the students teach me every day a mm -hmm. lot of things. Um, so, so it's it, for me. I, I don't have like a clear 
vision of what an ideal, ideal student is mm. because of because of this because everybody has a lot of things to work on some have to work more on in technique on technique some some have to work more in in, in language in jazz language and and, and uh, some have to work more in time on, on on their time feel some have to work more in I don't know in their sound some have to work more in more um, how can I say this uh, more um, philosophical maybe concepts conceptual yeah. so so yeah so it's it's really hard for me to try I, I judge less and less I, and I, I try to every year that passes by when I see a student when maybe 10 years ago I saw a student I was almost I had this perfect idea or this guy or this girl he can do this he's not going to do this and and now i i have more and more doubts about that because because yeah, everybody's so different and 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 things happen in in lives so maybe a student maybe the parents die or, or maybe has some love issues or some psycho psychological mm. issues and maybe he or she can't develop or or develop in a different way at least uh, so it's really hard for me to think of of a I have a clear idea of what an ideal student. At least it has to be some somebody really committed to this music and committed to sharing and communicating. I think. You also mentioned what are the rudiments for a guitarist. You know the ba the basic elements of you know guitar playing. And since you mentioned the sonic quality and some sort of repertoire and stylistic features in terms of jazz language, that was really down to earth. So that was an excellent answer to but that. Even though, even though. If you look to jazz history, the people who most of the people who were less, uh, how can I say this, who were less um, obvious, in, uh, um, was the people that really changed the music. Mm -hmm. So, so if, even if you have an idea of, of in terms of repertoire or in terms of style, uh, for example, um, Pat Mattini plays in a really different way that, uh, than any other guitar player. Mm -hmm. uh, until his time and Schofield and, and, and Bill Frizzell and and etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, that, that there's also interesting to note that people who really changed the um, aspects of the music and changed the way you, you can look at this instrument and uh, I have here a guitar okay. <laughs> the way the way you look at this instrument and you play this instrument and the people who saw it in a different way was really the people that really made um, hmm. uh, an important um, impression in jazz history. Since you're mentioning the important impression in history in terms of jazz guitar playing, could you give me three to five examples of who are your representatives in your opinion for your own yes. taste? All, all of them people that that didn't play in a standard way, that that that, that didn't play what that they revolutionized some something. Of course, Charlie Christian with Montgomery, John Schofield, Pat Matheny, mm -hmm. Bill Frizzell, mm -hmm. um, Kurt Rosenwinkel, Ben Monder, uh, I don't know. What do you ask the applicants to demonstrate at the audition? Okay, we have like a standard. It's not perfect. It's something that can be improved, but we also ask them to play like three different tunes, contrasting tunes, like a fast tune, a ballad, a blues, whatever. Mm -hmm. And we also ask them to sight read, and we also ask them to, um, what else? Sight read, tunes. We ask them some scales, mm -hmm. and then we do a little interview about their background, about what are their favorite musicians, uh, where did they study, and 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 what music music they listen to, what are their goals, what are their, their expectations. Mm. It's very hard. It's very hard to determine in 10, 15, 20 minutes. Absolutely. And and we also ha you, we always have a lot of people trying to, to applying. So it's it's really hard after listening to 30 or 40 guitar players or, or mm -hmm. more or 50. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to to you you can you can tell that this guy plays changes better than the other one, but you don't know what's going to happen in 3 years or 4 years from now. Mm -hmm. So is this guy that plays changes better than this guy? Will develop faster in a more consistent way than the other guy? You don't know. Mm -hmm. you don't know. So it's really something that... Um, and, and this, I, I think a lot about this also in the philo more philosophic way, which is grading, not only in terms of, of the students that are applying, but also grading a student. Mm. How can I say if this student is a... Is a, a um, 
we we give grades from zero to twenty. Okay. Uh, in Ireland is different, mm -hmm. and and everywhere is different. In in Berkeley was from zero to four, mm -hmm. something. Um, but um, how can you say a student is eighteen or nineteen or seventeen? Uh, so so this kind of numeric approach to 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 music education, I think, is really problematic. Mm -hmm. Because for for me it's very difficult. I don't know. I don't know how to which grade to always uh, every year. Mm. I don't know if I should give a 18 or 19 or 17 mm. or 14 or 13. Because how how can I put a number on on on, on this person? Yeah. I, sh I should give um, a quantitative mm. feedback, mm -hmm. maybe more than a qualitative feedback. Because qualitative feedback doesn't say anything. Mm. And uh, if you give a quantitative, um, uh, sorry, if you give if you give a qualitative feedback mm. instead of quantitative feedback, then you, you can say something that will help that student, that will help him or her develop. Mm. But if you just say, man, you're a 13, what is he going to do with mm. with, with number? Nothing. Mm. It means that I'm worse than the guy that gave, that had 14 and I'm better than the guy that had 12. But And, 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 and what do I need to work on, you know? Mm. So I think that's a... That's a Big challenge and the problem with music education at large and with jazz specifically, which is the the quantitative uh, approach that that we still uh, use as a, as a way of 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 assessing mm. uh, of assessing. So when uh, the students come and they apply, for me it's really hard to choose. I, I'm ch I, I'm choosing. We're choosing uh, on the actually we're going to have our exam like in two weeks. Mm. But we'll we'll choose on who played better at, at that time. But but it's so um, problematic. Mm. So problematic. Because somebody can maybe his dog died la, uh, last uh, the day before, oh. or maybe he w didn't have a good day, mm. or maybe he's just studied. Maybe somebody that was is studying this music for five years and is okay, but with five years is. His, his exam is going to be more or less okay, but somebody that studied this music for one year, uh, maybe is not as good as that guy, but maybe he's already very close. So in one year, he he, he could be really up. So it's it's really it's really hard. Re I think I find it really problematic. If you were to make that change, you know, have a more feedback that is related to quality, how would one do that? Okay, in in terms of of assessing hmm. our students or assessing people that are applying. Uh, may maybe uh, assessing your students exactly with the feedback. Okay. You know, uh, how is it okay. possible to present it to your yeah, university? Back, in, instead of instead of, of of course all these rules are 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 superior to us. You know, this is this is not even my school that that determines. Uh, actually, I, 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 I'm in standardized version, and I'm the yeah. pedagogical council, mm. and I, I I'm involved in all these these things but this is more in a, in a national level mm. you know they the, 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 the ministry tells us that we need to we're supposed to grade them according mm. to all these these rules but um if if i was in charge mm. of the ministry maybe maybe i would just say pass or fail mm. because you're you're good to go to the next level or, or or you're not good to go to the next level but the most important information would be you improve this, we, you improve that. You need also to work on this and work on that. It's not you, your sound is still not sufficiently. Uh, this is also very arguable, of course. But your sound, your sound maybe is not sufficiently coherent or mm -hmm. sufficiently. Uh, maybe I don't like it, but maybe somebody can have a coherent sound and a strong sound, you know. But maybe your sound is not still sufficiently coherent. Maybe your Time field is not sufficiently. Maybe your um, uh, technical, um, uh, the technical yeah. aspects in future maybe maybe they are not sufficiently developed for you to go to the next level. So I think we could be more specific in terms of the feedback, uh, in terms of uh, that that we give to the students, and then maybe just pass and fail mm. because. If you're if you're going to play with Herbie Hancock, he's not going to ask you if, how how were your grades in instrument four in mm. Berkeley. Mm. He's, he he just listens to you and you, or you sound very good to him or you don't. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's how it works mm -hmm. on on the field, right? Mm. So and this is a very this is a very profound discussion, which is how the academia sometimes are not sufficiently adapting to. Uh, Real life. Yeah. How are we creating 
this kind of 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 of, of, of uh, romantic world where it doesn't a work. functioning system mm. that really does not uh, um, how can I say this does not um, reflect mm -hmm. what happens in real life. Mm -hmm. So I think we, as, as educators, we really need to think about that. If you are one of those very passionate guitar players that comes to your <laughs> school, and you're very passionate, but it's simply not good for passing, what, would, what advice would you give to such students? Okay, okay. I, I, would, I would tell them, you're very passionate, you're very uh, committed, but um, <coughs> in this semester or in this year, you didn't develop enough mm -hmm. in this and this and this and this aspect for you to be, um, to take advantage of being in the next level. Mm -hmm. So what I recommend is that you do this level again and work further on your tempo or work further in your definition of, of the harmony while improvising or work further in your sound or work further in reading or work further uh, whatever what mm -hmm. so i would explain mm -hmm. and, and 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 this is this is really I, if i was a student i think i would thank my teacher for for really show me showing me what what's what, what's important because more than passing or failing it's important that you develop your 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 musicianship mm. your relation to the instrument your relationship to the the music so it's not because one semester more or one year more that you're not going to be a great musician yes. it just means that you're going to need to a little bit more time because people have different timings mm. sometimes maybe maybe i'm a little slow in some aspects in some learning aspects of of of, of music or jazz and maybe i'm fast in another aspects of jazz it doesn't make me a bad or a good musician it's just how i am mm. how i learn and how my timing uh, mm. f flows so was i think I, i would say to the student just um i think you need to work further on this and this and this in order to be to develop and to be at, at the level you want to be mm. and to take advantage of the next level so it's it's not like you're bad or we don't want you in school it's just you, you need a little bit more time to work on this mm. few these things Are there any false assumptions or pitfalls that student thinks when they enter the college, oh, I'm going to be this one, but the reality is completely different? Yes. Uh, but your meaning, can you specify a little bit how... Yeah, I, I would say false assumptions, you know, uh, I, th I think for me it was so, some people, you know, joined the course because they thought it was cool. Some people thought, you know, they will become becoming a musician as a lifestyle is this thing when you'll be touring the world, but the reality the moment you finish the fourth year is there are no gigs for you, right? You know, so do they live in a fairy tale or, you know, are they quite realistic? That that's a big problem actually, and then uh, Dave, we, we talk about a lot about this. Dave talks about this a lot. He has this um, article which is called Beyond the Music. I don't know if you read it. I I, where, I, I read it. Yeah. The, the, um, uh, what what um, competences do you develop uh, uh, being a jazz musician that 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 you can use outside jazz music? Mm. You know. Um, so, so this is this is a very concerning thing. What, what students are going to do after after the fourth year? But um, yeah, some students have some students have misconceptions, or maybe they think it's going to be different. But I, I think we need we also need a little bit this dreaming aspect. I, when I went to Berkeley, I was also like kind of dreaming state, and I thought that. Maybe I was going to be the next John Schofield, or maybe I don't know. I was going to, and I was a very good student, mm. and, and I, I almost had uh, four, which was the top. Uh, so I, I graduated with what? What's the name? Summa cum laude and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but of course, maybe I was a little eluded. I thought, well, uh, if I graduate summa cum laude, it means I'm going to be John Schofield, mm. and of course, it's not the truth. That's that's not the real. That's not the real world. That's why I think we need to adapt to what happens in the real world and 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 maybe it doesn't it doesn't make sense telling a student that you're summa cum laude or your your grade your gpa your average your gpa is four mm. uh, because in the real world that doesn't mean anything it um herbie is not going to call you because of your gpa mm. of your average or or because you had a very good uh, grade in your so yes i think there's Some students come with these ideas. I think I also have some of these ideas, but I think it's part of the dream. I mean, that's what really drives you. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
if if you go into school and you say, man, your life's gonna be a drag, man. Uh, you're gonna end up <laughs> playing for 20 euros and and living below the bridge, you know, under the bridge, and man, you're you're not being nice. You're not being you're not helping them out. Of course, you shouldn't also elude them. You shouldn't say that, man. You're gonna end up playing with Herbie Hancock, <laughs> but you never know. You never know. I have the son, the daughter of a, a colleague of mine. She went to Berkeley. Mm -hmm. She was not a brilliant uh, uh, instrumentalist. She studied piano. She's playing with Jacob Collier right now. She's singing, playing guitar, playing keyboard with Jason, Jacob Collier. And she finished her major like three years ago or two years ago. So That's very impressive. Very you good. never know. Why, why should I say that you're not going to make it? Mm. It's She's not in, our place. Yeah. Moments touring with Jacob Collier. Mm. And, and she has a very beautiful voice. She she she's a songwriter, so she she plays. She doesn't play guitar like Kurt Rosenwinkel or, mm. or nothing compared. She doesn't play piano like like McCoy Tyner or anything mm. compared. But she writes very good music, very good lyrics. She has a great voice, and she's playing with Jacob Collier. So how how can how can I look? Who am I to look at a student and say, man, your life's gonna be a drag. You're not gonna make it. Just do something else. Mm. So I think. Who, we also need to let them dream and let them follow their their dreams because this is how you uh, develop and this is how you learn. It's part of the learning process. Mm -hmm. So having some clashes with reality, mm -hmm. with difficulties, and uh, man, and, and and if some at, at some point you're not happy, you can always say this is not for me. Mm -hmm. I have a student I met with a student last week. Uh, he was a Good. He's not, of course, he's not Kurt Rosenwinkel, but he's a, he was a committed student, competent student. And he says, oh, man, I'm tired of teaching for because the, all the colleges are, are full, all the positions. Mm. I'm, I'm tired of teaching in small schools. Maybe I'm going to do something else. And I, I, for one side, I'm a little sad. On the other, on the other hand, I'm also saying, man, it's a good thing that you, he realized that maybe he wants something else, something different. And and. You can always play. You can you can go out of your job at five o'clock. A lot of jazz, some jazz musicians do that. Mm -hmm. Go out of your of your of your job at five o'clock and and then do your gigs and play your guitar. So it doesn't need to be a drama. I think I think most important is is giving students the the conditions to develop to get more involved with the music to be better musicians to think about the music think about what they do mm. and um and to really enjoy the ride because you're not you're ever we're not going to get to the point where we are satisfied i think that's that will be a very good very bad sign mm. if you're oh i i think i'm play i play I'm okay playing this, and I'm okay with my. Of course, everybody needs once more and once develop and wants to play more. And today, I spend a whole day practicing. Mm. Uh, so, uh, it's part of the process. I think it's important for us to enjoy the ride and and to let the students enjoy the ride. And and if for some reason they get um, sad about something, they 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 can change. I mean, that's that's okay. Mm. Maybe 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 they need to follow that process to get to the third. Imagine the third year and say, I don't want this. Mm. I, I don't want to learn harmony. I don't like to study your training. I don't like to. I think this is very competitive. I think uh, I, I rather play pop or I rather be an accountant. That's okay. Mm. It's not a drama. It's not the end of the world. Mm. But uh, but yeah, some students come with some assumptions and ideas and and and. Um, but I think that's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's part of what of of, of their drive. Mm. But of course, of course, uh, there's a problem with, with employment. And yeah. take care and okay. good luck with the rest of the project. Okay, well, thank you very much, Ricardo. See you. <laughs> See you. Bye bye.